I'm Karen Hurd, and I'm here with our next edition of Asking for a Friend. And uh, this question, I think, is on everyone's mind right now, which is, you know, we're all on this fast pivot. And as you're making decisions about how to best serve your customer, how do you include your customer in the innovation process? And I knew exactly who to call uh, my friend Chip Bell, who actually has a brand new book coming out, which I'm hoping he'll tell us a little bit about. But Chip, how would you answer that question? Well, I think uh, I like to think of it from a partnership perspective. And if you think about the core of what it means to be in a partnership, inclusion is a key part of that. And so how do we involve the customer? How do we include the customer? And many organizations, I think, have asked their opinion. And obviously, when you do, the degree to which you demonstrate, it matters, it's important, and they see evidence of their um, of their uh, suggestions and ideas, uh, then they, uh, they tend to give you a lot more. A good example, uh, I think, is Starbucks. They had a program that ask customers for their feedback. And they actually created um, a lot of things that we now think Starbucks created, uh, mm-hmm. like cake pops and, uh, and things like the, the swaggle sticks that keep your, your coffee from uh, spilling. And um, a lot of the, brand, the types of coffee they have, uh, those things actually came from customers. And when they see, oh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi in the Starbucks stores, another example, customers came up with that. Starbucks didn't. They didn't come from corporate, so to speak. Uh, But I think because of that, they wound up getting uh, over 150,000 input ideas and suggestions from their customers. So I think the first thing is you got to create a vehicle, an opportunity, and a way for them to influence what you do, to be included in what you do. Uh, and then the second piece of that example is they made it matter. You demonstrate to customers, uh, you ask for it, um, a- and you got it. I- I- I'll give you a local example. <laughs> I-, I, go, I go once in a while, I go to a liquor store, uh, and my favorite liquor store is a guy named Matt Soconi Seller, and he has throughout the store these little um, uh, cigar boxes because he also has, sells cigars, you know, in a humidor. Uh And uh, so, you know, they come in these cool boxes. And so he took those boxes after he'd sold all the cigars and he put a sign that says, tell us your ideas and suggestions. And so um, he put them all over the store and had a little pad in there, little pencils, and you could fill out a little thing and drop it in there. And so, and people did. And the reason they did is as you're leaving Oconee Cellar on the right hand side next to the door is a big old bulletin board, like a cork bulletin board. And he's got, Here's an idea somebody had on a white card, because that's what cards were. The, and then in a blue card, and here's what we're doing about it, or here's oh. what we're changing, or here's why it's a wonderful idea. We'll keep working on it, or it's a wonderful idea here. Here's why we were not able to do that. But what it told, and it, obviously it didn't matter whether your card was up there. The fact is that somebody's card is up there, tells people my input matters. And so I think it starts with creating that kind of relationship. That's why I like to call it a partnership where people feel like they are in fact valued, that inclusion is important. Um, oh, Chip, that's so interesting because that's a very, uh, the, in our research on courageous cultures, that's what we were also finding. We call it respond with regard, you know, and yeah. so many people say nothing will ever happen with my idea. And sometimes you are actually doing something with the idea, but you haven't made it so visible that it that their idea matters so it's really interesting to me the parallel that you're using a lot of the same techniques with customers as we're recommending you use with employees exactly and and with others and not just with employees not with just with customers but people who sort of know the customer who gives you a path i'll give you a fun example of that i've got a good friend of mine john longstreet and john is uh, currently the ceo of the pennsylvania restaurant and hotel association in harrisburg but I knew John and worked, I've known John for years, but I worked with John when he was the CEO of the Harvey Hotel in Texas, um, in Dallas. And he realized that when um, guests checked out of the hotel, they'd stop by the, the front desk person when they were checking them out says, how was your stay? Now we know how we answer that question. How was your stay? We usually have one word, fine, whatever, unless it's really bad or really good. 
And so he realized he wasn't learning very much about what mattered to the customer. So what did he do? Uh, every month he held focus groups with the taxi drivers who frequented his property to take people back to DFW after they'd stayed at the hotel. And he'd hold focus groups with them. And what he learned from the taxi driver, he'd buy them breakfast and they'd come in and sit around and what he learned from them was what the customer really felt. So it was a path to there. But the most important thing is he didn't just learn new ideas, new information. He got insights. For example, uh, he, he learned that when customers complained about the fact that the uh, towels in their room smelt a little scorched like they'd been in housekeeping dryer too long, what they really were concerned about was a fire in a hotel started in housekeeping. It, when, when they complained about the fact that they saw there was a security light out in the parking lot, what they really were worried about was, am I going to be secure in my hallway? Or if they saw dust bowls under their bed, they really were worried about bugs in my room. So it led to, a, to the insight so he could begin to make some changes and improvements in, in terms of how he did it. But it was a kind of an indirect way. Um, to learn about, uh, learn about the customer. I think, and when we see, can customers see, hey, look, they did things I value at the eyes of, so this not just directly ask the customer. You know, I love it, the fact that the mayor of the city of Santa Clarita, uh, just north of LA, decided they wanted to really know what their citizens thought, so they held the annual hairdresser's banquet. <laughs> <laughs> so here again, they built a cadre and a relationship with hairdressers because they knew anybody hears complaints about the city of Santa Clarita, it's going to be hairdressers. And so they built an alliance and they built a partnership with that important group uh, as a path to saying, let's make sure the customer feels the fact that we are totally responsive. So I think in many ways, partnership runs in unusual directions. And so, you know, asking a neighbor about uh, something may be more important than asking the person directly. Um, ah, I love that so much. Imagine, Chip, if we asked the tech crew at a keynote on the as what are they hearing as people are leaving the, the ballroom, right? Absolutely. <laughs>